We're going to cover configuring dynamic VLANs in Virtual Smart Zone with RADIUS. RADIUS is running with Network Policy Server and Active Directory on Windows Server 2012 R2. In the description box below, we've included great resources to assist you, including links to our how-to hub. Be sure to check it out often as we are always updating the content. Before we can begin, within Active Directory, we need to create a user that we can test with. To do so, we're gonna right click on user, go to new and select user. Since this is for testing, we're gonna keep it simple and create a username of client one. Once we've done that, we'll set a password and set that password to never expire. The last piece, we're gonna right click on the user and go to properties. Under the dial in tab, we just wanna ensure that access is allowed, which we can see here that it is. Next, we wanna check the member of tab. We're gonna use domain users for the group of users that we wish to authenticate this way. You can use any group that you choose or create, but for us in this example, we're just gonna use domain users. Here we see they're a member, so we're gonna click on apply and okay. Now we move into network policy server where we need to create a radius client. In this example, our radius client will be virtual smart zone. So we right click on radius clients and select new. Now here we'll give it a friendly name and we'll input the IP address of our virtual smart zone installation. Also, we're gonna create a shared secret. Now the shared secret we need to remember it will need to be configured in smart zone as well. And this secret should be something that's separate from our normal passwords that we use within our network infrastructure. Now we need to create a policy. Let's right click on network policies and select new. We will give it a name and leave the type of network access server as undefined and then click next. We need to add conditions. So click add and then select user groups and click add. We are going to include domain users. This is the users group we are utilizing in this example. Your settings may differ, so choose the correct group for your environment. On the next screen, we want to ensure that access is granted. The next screen, we need to include our authentication methods. We'll select PEEP and MSCHAP version two. We have to add these individually. Once added, we can include less secure authentication methods such as CHAP and PAP SPAP. Once we click next, we are warned that we've selected insecure authentication methods. Selecting yes will display the help topic so we'll select no. Next, we have constraints. We will select NAS port type and select wireless IEEE 802.11 and click next. Now we are at our settings. Here, we are going to add and include certain attributes so Radius understands the information our clients are sending. We click add and select tunnel type. When we click add, we need to add information to our selection. Here, we will select commonly used for 802.1x and leave VLANs as our selection, then click OK and OK again. Next, we need to select Tunnel Private Group ID and click Add. When we click Add again, we need to enter the string of 1000. 1000 is our VLAN ID or VLAN number being assigned to clients in this example. The next attribute is Tunnel Medium Type. We'll click Add, then Add again. Here, we are verifying that our value is 802, which it is, so click OK and OK again. Now we can close this window and add one final item. Click on Vendor Specific and then click Add. The Ruckus Vendor ID for Radius is 25053, which can be found in the Ruckus Dictionary file. This file is available on our support portal. Now select Yes, it conforms and click OK and OK. One thing I want to point out is the test admin value. This is purely cosmetic. Since there are such a large number of vendors with Radius dictionary files, NPS provides you the ability to name them. Here we can review the information we've input. Once satisfied, click Finish. If we find any errors, we can click on Previous and make changes. The final step is to move our newly created policy to the top of the list. NPS policies work off of a hierarchy, so the top policy will be processed first. This way, we ensure ours is the first one to be used. Just right click on the policy and select move up until it's reached the top of your list. Now let's configure virtual smart zone. We're gonna to navigate to services and profiles and authentication. Here, let's click on the proxy smart zone authentication tab and click on create. We'll name it and use Radius for our server protocol. 
Then we need the IP address of our Radius server, the port, and the shared secret. This is the same shared secret we configured in Windows NPS earlier on our Radius client. Next, we need to create a WLAN that we can attach clients to and have a VLAN dynamically assigned. Let's navigate to Wireless LANs and click on Create. We've named it Radius Auth. We've ensured it's in the correct zone and we'll leave our authentication type as standard usage and set the method to 802.1x EEP. Under Authentication and Accounting Service, we're going to enable the authentication service. Next, we will click the plus sign to create a new authentication profile. We've named it Dynamic VLAN and then click on Create to create a new Realm-based authentication service. We'll name the Realm Dynamic VLAN, select our Radius service, and use the non-3GPP call flow for our authentication method. Under Dynamic VLAN, we will leave this blank as our Radius server will assign that VLAN per our configuration there earlier. After clicking OK, we can see our new service is now there and built. Let's click OK again. Back in our WLAN creation pane, let's open Advanced Options. There's nothing to change here, but as you can see, the WLAN is not assigning our VLAN. Remember, the VLAN assignment will be entirely handled by Radius. As you probably know, clients are oblivious to what VLAN they've been assigned. So for us to verify, we need to look in the controller under Clients and Wireless Clients and verify that the device we just attached to our access point that's controlled by SmartZone was placed in the correct VLAN. Looking here, we can note that Radius did in fact assign VLAN 1000 to our client that we've just connected. Before you go, don't forget to check the description box below and access any of the resources we've provided. Thanks for watching.